Hi, Maria. Welcome to Revitalized Womanhood. How are you? I'm well today. How are you? I'm so good, and I am so excited to meet you in person esque. <laughs> Finally. Yes. How many I know. years? It's we've. Oh my we've gosh. Seven, eight. <laughs> so crazy. I'm, I'm like trying to use my fingers. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> yes, we have we have been friends online for that many years and never met in person, which we really need to fix that. We need to go travel. We need to go do something. Get our families together. Get our boys together. They would all have such a good time together. They would have a blast. I followed in your footsteps in some some locations like Costa Rica, right? And we booked our trip to uh, Lisbon and Croatia this summer. So I'll have to send you the details. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you are going to love Croatia so much. Lisbon is still on our list. We actually had to change our plans. Oh, we didn't have to. We wanted to. Actually, funny, funny story. We were in Croatia at the stay <laughs> and we were going to Plitvis Lake. So we'll need to talk about that because there's like a whole thing before you have to get your permits for that. Okay. So we were staying at this state and it was like houses around and then the common area, like a cooking, barbecue, mm -hmm. whatever common area. So, and we hadn't heard English for quite some time, right? And so we, Rick had come out and our car was blocking someone else's driveway. And so he had to move it and he was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, sorry, you probably don't speak English. And she's all Canadian, just spits out, <laughs> out in a boat. And he's like, whoa, okay, you're Canadian. And she's like, yeah. yeah. But her, her boyfriend, fiance now, is Italian. They're, they live in Sicily together. But anyway, we just became fast, immediate friends. And he was telling us all these really cool, not cool, but crazy stories about Croatia. And, <laughs> and then they talked us into actually, instead of going and doing the rest of Spain and Portugal, like we were planning on doing, we drove all the way down Italy. Like every, every bit of Italy, we drove down, clear down to the bottom of the boot and then rode the ferry over to Sicily and, and hung out with them in Palermo. And then we rode the ferry. We got on an overnight ferry that takes you all the way up to Genoa, back to the beginning. Oh my gosh. See, it was so I cool. vicariously through you. This, that sounds amazing. <laughs> it was, it was really fun. So, but unfortunately we missed Portugal and the rest of Spain. So we need to do that still. So I'm Definitely. excited. I'll keep you posted about how it is. We have some friends living there right now. So I'm excited to see kind of what gems they found and uh, yeah, take part in it. There is nothing better than having a local show you around. Yeah. So good. So okay. why don't you, would you please introduce yourself to my listeners? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So I am Maria. Um, I originally met you when, when I had started my first business. It was an e-commerce business all around designer diaper bags. And that business is called City Collective. I am no longer the owner of that business. So not only did I start an e-com business, I went through the selling process as well in November of 2021. Um, I stayed on for about a year to do consulting. So it was really great because I didn't have to just walk away immediately. Um, and I still got to kind of do the transition and make sure that the people that had come on before the acquisition could stay on and, and still be part of the company. In that entire time, I also had, a, you know, my own corporate career <laughs> that I was doing. So it was like um, a little bit of moonlighting, I guess, is what my husband and I would say sometimes. Um, sometimes he would say City Collective was a very expensive hobby. Um, <laughs> so there's multiple things, uh, you know, that uh, were, were said about having a full time demanding corporate career and also um, starting a business. But yeah, it's, it's kind of who I am and as a nutshell from, you know, professional side, um, but family is, is definitely like a lot of us matters a lot in my life. So I have a husband, Todd, and I have two boys, Atticus is nine and Elias is seven. And you're a dog mama. I'm a dog mama. I have two wonderful dogs. We have a pit bull mix um, that we rescued. She's 14 years old now and she's still going strong. And then we... You know, kind of got the COVID puppy thing, um, and she is crazy. <laughs> so that's why you see me like it was like getting an infant. Um, uh, but we rescued her as well, and she's a Sharpay bulldog mix, and uh, she's two years old now, so still really crazy, but just just does the funniest thing. So keeps me laughing. 
Oh my gosh, I love that so much. And you guys are just, like you said, traveling, adventuring, yeah. loving life, getting the most out of it. And I love that so much yeah. about you. Yeah, we've always been super active in our life. We love meeting people. We love experiencing new cultures. Our boys are very much the same way. They really go with the flow and they just assimilate to situations really quickly. Um, so we love to travel and basically, especially as we get older, um, and I think as a woman too, uh, you know, I, I feel like, you know, my husband likes to golf, right? Like that's a hobby. People look at the hobby. Like, I don't know that I have like a hobby per se, other than eating really good food. So I love trying new restaurants that come into town, um, and traveling. So that's, those are my two hobbies. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Because we kind of take on so many things to do. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's something you'd want to do every day for the rest of your life all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where is your Very husband? True. He'd probably be okay golfing for the rest of his life. Oh, yeah. Look he at this. I want to show you this. Look. Oh, oh, you have one. Of, that is like the original. The I can tell. Original. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yep. It is that the City Babies. City Babies. It is the OG. Yeah. This is my laptop bag, and I... Love it. Oh, I'm so glad to see that. That is like at least nine years old. That's one yeah. of the original, original ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. Going strong. Believe. Yeah. I mean, we started City Babies and then I wanted to expand, you know, and do more than just diaper bags. And City Babies was, you know, pretty distinct to babies and, and moms. So uh, we went, that's when we rebranded to City Collective. Yeah. That's and I, I know this isn't like, it's not, but it is your baby and you did create it. And I think it's a very important part of you is that you created a line of diaper bags that were gorgeous and for the urban working mom. You know, not necessarily just like me that's um, wearing my Lulu's, my crossbody and hauling a kid on my hip. This is, these are women who are wearing their pumps and their office attire and these bags need to go with that, right? I'm not going to wear my gorgeous, you know, whatever suit and yeah. throw on this backpack and be like, hey guys, let's go to work. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. You hit the nail on the head with that because that's really what I was trying to encapsulate in that bag. And I would say, I, probably people nowadays are like, well, there's tons of beautiful diaper bags. Well, nine years ago, there there wasn't. <laughs> and me traveling to Europe was a big inspiration because I saw a lot of women over there carrying nice leather backpacks as diaper bags. And I was like, oh, I really love that sleep. And then Todd was like, I love that too. I don't really want to be carrying this chevron striped diaper bag that you have or the flower one. And then the one out at the time for men was very utilitarian looking, very army like, which, you know, is great for some people, but Todd wanted something a little more sleek. And I also was kind of in that um, kind of change in my life. Like you mentioned, I was a corporate career woman and I love being that. I love my job so much. Um, I didn't want to lose like that sophistication either. So that's kind of how it all came together. Um, and originally I wasn't expecting even to be a brand. I was like, I'll just put these up on Amazon you know, Amazon, you don't have to have a brand name. You just need to have great reviews, good pictures and, and clear product description. You can sell anything. And that's how it started. But I fell in love, <laughs> I fell in love with, you know, the brand. I wanted to do more. I got so excited when I saw people get excited about their bags, when they would message me. And then when we started social media, I really just got hooked because just I met wonderful people like you who really enjoyed the bag and really understood what I was trying to achieve with it. And I think that goes into, so Maria, you guys, she actually sent me a message. She's like, what do you want to talk about when I asked her to be on here? And I was like, you know, I just, you are just an all encompassing woman. And I want to talk about all the different facets of that. But, you know, she came back with me and says, Hey, I really like to focus on three topics. And I'm like, okay, you are guiding this this interview and I love it but so for you to say this about your diaper bags and this place in your life is exactly the whole philosophy behind these three things do you know what I mean yeah. so I I'm going to jump in with the first thing you you talked about was focusing on controlling the things that we can control and start accepting that things aren't always meant to go your way 
right? So you were, this was like how you define, how, do, how you find balance in your life, right? Doing all these things, being a corporate woman, being a mom, being a wife, being a business owner out of your home, you know, where do you find balance? You were probably pulled in so many different directions. Yeah, totally. And I think as you mentioned on many of your podcasts, I wasn't always in balance and <laughs> that is a process that is ongoing. You don't just magically figure it out and you're in balance all of a sudden for the rest of your life. So there are definitely times where I spent way more time on City Collective than I should have and I neglected my family time. Um, but, you know, that's when you have to leverage a skill set of recognizing that and pulling back quickly and focusing on things you can control. Does City Collective, does my corporate job, does my family all need my time? Yes, right? I can't control that, they, they need that. So what can I control? I control how my day is structured the next day. I can control where I spend my time. Um, and so I found to really be able to accomplish everything I wanted, focusing on the things I could control were really important. But more importantly was the emotional capacity of that because as you mentioned, it was a lot. It was a lot to balance all of that. And on top, trying to also keep my health up. So I'm very much a huge believer in starting my day with working out, um, keeping my body moving and healthy. So I realized I couldn't focus energy on things I couldn't control because then the whole mood just changed the rest of the day and nothing went well. I was not on schedule. I was consumed by trying to control something I couldn't control. And it just really negatively impact, impacted not only me, but all of my family as well. I love that you're you're talking about the emotion or that yeah, it is emotional, but the, the energy suck that wasting wasting energy or brain capacity on things like that, that because I feel it. I know what you're talking about. It's like I constantly feel like, am I putting all of my attention in the right places? I'm putting it in all these different places. Am I putting it in the right places? Yeah. And and you just if you just sit down and say to yourself, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do it well. I can do this. I can do it well. It's like I tell I tell my listeners, whoever will listen, I tell. If you get to a place where you're just so fried that you're so stuck, you need to walk away and go clean a mirror, right? That's my solution is go clean a toilet. My solution yeah. is something that is so simple that it will just yeah. set you back in huh, mode, right? I love that. And then that's what you kind of have to find. You have to find something that resets you and allows you to get back into whatever train of thought helps you move on. Um, you know, for me, I when I talk about the things I can and can't control, a lot of people are like, well, that's just easier said than done. And it's like, not if you think about it in a certain perspective. So if I know I have to have a difficult conversation that is going to drain me emotionally, but I have to have it, right? Can't control that. I can control putting that at the start of my day so that if I, so that I'm not putting it at to end at 4 p.m. when my kids walk through the door and I can't be the best mom because I literally need an hour after that call to decompress, to clean mirrors, to go wash a toilet, right? So that is what I mean. It's an intricate process and it does take some thought, but you literally say, okay, if you have to write it down, write it down. What can I control that has to be done? What can I control? And they could not even relate, but taking control of your life actually gives you confidence to do the things that you can't control or have to do, um, depending on what terminology you want to use. Well, and think about the things that are so simple that it just takes self-discipline, like turning off the TV, right? Yeah. How, how much of your day are you wasting watching a show? Which sometimes you need to, I get it. Sometimes that's a decompress and I love it. I am all about it. But yeah. sometimes, or not hitting snooze on your phone, like making a commitment to yourself that you're gonna wake up at a certain time and then you wake up at that certain time, that's a choice. That's a, something you can absolutely control. And that yeah. means that you're not rushing to the next thing. You're not rushing to get your kids to school. You're not late so you can actually go to the gym or whatever, right? So yeah, yeah it's it's things that you 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 have to just make a choice. It might not be a fun choice, yeah. but it's a choice, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
No, it's so interesting um, you say that because, like, I didn't find taking control until probably when I got to college. So in kind of a flip view of this, I was the person that blamed every everybody else for my problems when I was younger. Um, oh, I didn't, you know, make varsity basketball team my freshman year. Well, that's because the coach doesn't like me um, or, you know, whatever. You, you don't get the promotion and somebody else who you think does, you know, not as good of work as you gets the promotion. And there's two things that I really took from that. It's like somebody said to me, and this is when it happened later in life, I wish it would have happened in high school, was like, why are you giving those people that control of your mood? Like, why don't you take control and then, you know, you affect what happens after that? Like, you have control. And I'm like, oh, you're right. Like, I just thought, I'm out here, I have no control, think that things are just gonna happen to me because it's me, woe is me kind of thing. And I'm like, oh wait, no, I could just literally like that take control. And part of that process that that person explained to me is like, I hate to break it to you, but not everything is about you. Like stop thinking everything's about you. That person that was rude to you at the coffee shop this morning, it's not about you. Like why, why do you care? Like don't let their energy affect you. Control what you can control. You can control ignoring that. You can control going and saying one nice thing to somebody right next to you to get that negative energy out of you. Um, and after I started having that mindset, like, oh, st- the, me not getting the promotion or me not making that team I wanted to make, it wasn't about me. Like, that other person might have had a skill set I didn't know about. Did I even tell my boss I wanted to be promoted? Did I even, you know, talk to the, the coach and ask the head coach of the basketball team, well, what could I have done or what do I need to work on? These are all things that once... I took in and, and realized, focus on things I can control because I will get more confident and I will just be a better person. Stop thinking it's all about me. Uh, I was able to kind of just be free. And it was like this huge weight lifted off my chest. Um, and I did walk like a little bit more confidently about everything in life. And that goes from personal to business. I love that so much. I don't, I think, I think I moved my folders over there away from me, of course, where I can't reach them because I was trying to make it look clean and not cluttered. But I actually uh, did my, I I use it a lot. I use the cognitive cycle a lot in my um, coaching and in my, because I think it's a very important thing. It's like really the most basic of mindset tools and Mm -hmm. everybody should be using it all the time. I mean, it's called different things, but it's a cognitive cycle. Some people call it a creation cycle. Some people call it a model. Some people call it whatever. But I I actually explained it to my boys last night. I went home and I said, listen, this is what we need to start getting in the habit of. Because once I started recognizing it, like I was sitting there doing my makeup in the mirror and I was on a Marco with my friend while I was was just chatting with her and Mm -hmm. seriously recognized myself in a 10 minute time frame. I had worked through three completely different cognitive cycles. Like I had had, I had to work myself through it. You know, I started in a negative place and I had to work myself through it so my actions wouldn't come out negative, right? And so I sat down with my kids who Castle is 11 now and Hayes is eight. And I explained to them what a cognitive cycle was. And I'm like, you guys, your thoughts create your feelings that create your actions. And when you're mad at each other, when you're thinking, I I don't like my brother, and that's what you're thinking, and your emotions are that angry and so sad, then that's how you're going to act to each other. And <laughs> so, yeah, I am, I am actually trying to teach these philosophies to my children right now. I love it. How, how did they respond to that? I'm very curious. They were good. They sat and listened, and I actually asked them. I says, "Okay, if if I'm thinking this, what would that make you feel in your yeah. in yourself? What would?" That? And they described the what feelings they would feel, and I said, "And then what do you think would happen after that?" Like I explained it with a car, a, a traffic, because we were driving to school as well. And I says, "Okay, so I'm about to be in a red light, and." And what if it was one of those days that we were late and we were running and we didn't get in the car on time? How would I be feeling right now? And they explained it. And I said, and then what could happen? And I said, could we get in a car accident? Could, you know, mommy would be yelling at you and be frustrated, right? Or I gave myself time this morning, right? We were all on time with what we were doing and we got out the door on time. So now I hit this red light and how do we all feel? And they were saying calm and fine. And it was, you know, so I was just relating it to what we were doing in that moment. And I love that. They're just getting to that age where they're so, and I've got Castle who 
is very thoughtful of others and Mm -hmm. Hayes, who is very thoughtful of himself, (laughs) which, and I don't know if it's just because he's eight. I don't think it is. I think he's just very internal and thinks Mm -hmm. about things in the very present, what's happening with him in the present, whereas Castle's very thought out. And so like grandma and grandpa brought them home from being with them for the last week and just a small example, but Hayes went to the car and got his bag out and his something and walked to the house. And grandma says, well, there's still more bags here. And he goes, yeah, but that's castles. You know, it never crossed his mind that he should also get castles. Yeah, Yeah. I have one of each too. So that's really resonating. (laughs) Yes, yes. And so that's, and so I says, and so also I'll give you another little snippet. You're going to love this. I want to see this. You're going to have to text me pictures. So they now have assigned nights to do dinner. So tonight Castle has dinner and the next night Hayes has dinner, but it's their responsibility to let daddy know because Rick's the stay at home dad now. They have to let daddy know what they need from the grocery store and they have to, it's up to them to make sure they have it all, you know? So tomorrow night, I think we'll be having peanut butter sandwiches for dinner, but that's okay because they need to feel the responsibility of what it looks like to be part of the family. I love that. And we, you know, we are the kind of family which number one, introduced our kids to every single food under the sun when they were first able to do baby led weaning. And we have two picky eaters, so <laughs> just putting that out there. <laughs> um, but I love that. I love it because it's like, I think our boys need to feel part of that. And maybe even kind of going back to the control conversation, maybe they need to feel a little bit of control to get that confidence. And that's a really great idea. And I definitely want to implement that. And I will, I'll send some pictures. We'll see what they come up with. <laughs> I'm hoping, especially I'm hoping that it gives Hayes the feeling of some responsibility that's external from himself, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so it starts yeah. focusing. He has to think about other people's needs. Yeah. So that was kind of the goal in that. And I'm sure when you all are so grateful for what he's made and he feels that, like how feels how good that feels, I'm sure it'll go a long way. Oh, he is definitely a words of affirmation. Oh my gosh. I could discipline him like forwards, backwards into China. I could discipline him and he wouldn't care. The next, right when he got done with it, he'd just go do the same thing, right? But if I'm like constantly telling him how good he is and whatever, he responds to that so much. Yeah. You, they sound, he sounds so similar to Atticus. That is mm-hmm. Atticus for me, very much so. He, he's, he's a lot like me in that sense. I'm very defiant. If you tell me not to do something, I want to go do it. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, he's, he's very much the same. He's That's a, he's funny. Affirmation. That's me too. He is my son. hundred percent. He's my son. Rick's like, that's your son. And I'm like, I know, I know. Well, okay. So control the things that you can control. Focus on the things that you can control. I love it because everything in your life is a choice. And it's just like, it's exactly like you saying from your corporate job, you wanted to create something else. You made a choice to do that. You made the choice to work work that with your family and whatever. And I also love too, is if you figure out, listeners, if you can figure out and focus in on what your values are, right? What your most important values are, then you will end up finding that alignment because if you know that your value is family first things first and then after that comes this and then after that comes this that if you're presented with a situation where it's going to come down between this or this you're going to pick your value right if you've already defined what your value is it's like that line in the sand you you know you this is the line this is what it is and you've defined it so yeah. okay number two this is the hardest hardest thing i think everyone on the planet deals with this and i don't care if you sit and say oh i don't think i don't care what anyone thinks and blah, blah. Mm, no oh, yeah. we all care i mean there's different levels obviously right. but you you gave me stop the comparison game be the best you correct i whether it is business or personal but it really hit me hard with business is you never should try to be somebody better than somebody else. Like, just try to be your best. If you're trying to be better than somebody else, you're spending energy in the wrong place. And it actually can cloud your focus and cloud what you should be focusing on to reach your goals. 
Um, I, I truly believe that because if you're trying to be set better than somebody else, that somebody else has their own goals, their own values, like you said. So when you're trying to be better than them, you're actually steering away from who you really are, what's important to you, and your superpower, everybody has one. You're, everybody is good at something. Um, you actually could get away from it, and that could deter your business, could deter you from going and hitting those goals that you have set. And it's also just, it's just a lot of negative energy. And I take it a, a step further in the sense of don't compare your timeline and your successes to somebody else either. It, if anything, when you start a business, go and read about all those large businesses that have made it. A lot of businesses out there that are appearing to be successful are operating at, you know, not at a profit right now. Um, Airbnb took what 10 plus years. The, the, the founders of Airbnb were selling cereal boxes with politicians' faces on them to make money before Airbnb took off. Kate Spade drowned everything, she was broke for four years. Everybody sees the success at the end of the road, they don't see everything that goes into it, and they don't see the timeline a lot of the time. So, again, it's it's you can't even look at somebody who maybe has a similar product to you and say, why are they more successful to me? Or uh, I wish I was that successful. If you're asking in the sense of like, you want to figure out what are they doing? Or you you want to figure out how you can apply some principles to your business, then start networking and actually figuring it out versus just saying it and focusing on that, that energy of why. Why not me, right? Take back the control. Go do the things that you can do to improve upon. But yeah, the, the comparison game is is a slippery slope in both business and in and personal for sure. And someone you didn't start at the same time, right? My whole thing was when we first started traveling and I would reach out to these other travel families and I would say, oh my gosh, I remember exactly who it was. And I said to her, holy cow, you've been to 38 countries. And I'm like, how did you even do that? How are we ever, we're never going to catch up to you. And she says, well, I started a lot longer, a lot before you, right? Yeah. Like you'll get there, but you, it's not, it's not she's better because she did it. It's she just started before me, right? And also the other thing with that too is she's looking at people that have gone to a hundred places and thinking I'm never going to get there. You know, it's everybody gets caught in this. And if you just, like you're saying, take the time and focus it inward to what you're doing and what you're excited about. Yeah. It's because do you want to live that other person's life? Probably not, honestly. No. Like my favorite thing is pure imperfection because it's showing you that it's not all beautiful houses with white kitchens and kids with perfectly clean put together outfits. And you know, it's, or, yeah. or when we travel, it's not those beautiful pictures at the Eiffel Tower. It's not this yeah. gorgeous outfit in Italy in the Cinque Terre. It's like, dragging my kids and getting them fed, trying to feed them food that they don't want to try and, and finding something yeah. that they'll finally try. Like Locke wouldn't drink any of the milk in Costa Rica. I don't know why Costa Rica milk is fine. It tastes fine. He, something about it. He was like, nope, not, not doing it. And I was yeah. like, you're going to starve to death, kid. <laughs> I know. Right. It just, and that, but the same goes for business, right? Like yeah. You look at these businesses on the outside, you're like, oh, they have it so together. Like, oh, that TikTok they just did has like a million views. They must have made a ton of money. Um, it's not the case. You know, I talked to businesses that went like on the Today Show, for example, and they're like, we sold 10 units after the Today Show and they're expecting to sell 100,000 units. It's like, what? And they're like, yeah, just we thought, oh, it's the Today Show. No, it wasn't our dem demographic, but they took time to pick it apart. Um, and life is the same way. Like there are those moments. So embrace them. There are the moments with the beautiful dresses in Italy. There are the moments where the million views on TikTok happen from a business perspective, embrace them. And I think that's, that's another thing that I had to really personally take time to do was like, look how far I've come. You know, you talk about 38 countries versus a hundred. And I had to say, wow, I've been to 10 countries. That's awesome. Some people never get to go to 10. So I've also had to, because I'm not personally great at that. I'm very much very hard on myself and and put in a lot of energy outward to others before I, I look at myself. So it's just another thing to definitely celebrate those successes along the way too. One of the best pieces of advice I 
got when I started a podcast was absolutely never listen to anyone in your same genre. Just don't. <laughs> because no yeah. matter what, you will start because that's what you kind of want to do, right? You want to see what yeah. someone else is doing. You want to compare yourself. You want to, I mean, not in a bad way. Yeah. You want to kind of get a feel of it, right? But the best advice, because in your brain, you will start to sound like them. You will start to regurgitate the same things because that's what your brain thinks it needs to be. That's what you think you need to be. And then then yeah. guess, guess what I lose? Yeah. Gina. Like yeah. everything that is super unique to me, I've just lost. And now I'm just trying to be a replicate of something else. Yeah, and I will tell you, so when I first started, I was really lucky, but also diligent. Like I joined um, a couple Facebook groups and I found a core group of women who all had baby brands. And we are now best friends, you know, similar to kind of our relationship. It all started online. I've met a couple of them in person, but everything from pajamas to um, baby crib sheets to play mats, like all these women are so amazing. We share a lot with each other. We're very transparent because we're not, you know, direct com um, directly competing and we want to help each other out. Well, half the stuff we share, it'll work for two of the other women and three not. Like, and we're in the same genre, oh, basically kind of the same target audience even. And we will do the exact same thing. And it's a wildly successful summit for some of us and not so much on the other, the other side or for the others. And that just blows my mind. And again, that's when I'm like, okay, Maria, control what you can control. It didn't work. So why don't you think it worked? Let's start troubleshooting. Um, but yeah, it's just like, again, it just goes back to like, that person got where they are probably for really intricate reasons that they don't even know how to tell you. <laughs> and some of it is a little lucky too. You know, you started talking about, well, the time you started traveling, it's very different than others. Travel was different, you know, for people back, you know, business is different. There are people that started when blogging and Instagram first started and they made a killing and they still are because they started at that point in time. You can't recreate that. So figure out what's working today. It's not a reason, again, folks we control, it's not a reason not to do it. It's just, and especially I will say in just social media, everything's changing day by day. So your strategy that worked last week is not gonna work this week mainly. I know anybody who's in the thick of it is probably laughing with me right now and, and crying too a little bit because it's so frustrating. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I love that you talked about women empowering women there because I, have never felt like, and I'm sure you felt like this with them, these women that were in the same genre and you're all trying to get the same target audience. There is enough mm -hmm. for everybody. So why would I be trying to keep you down? Why would I be trying yeah. to belittle you or steer you in a different direction that's not going to help you? Why don't we lift each other up? Why don't we bolster each other? Because I'm like, I have a women's community, right? I invited a woman who has her own women's community to come mm -hmm. and be a guest attendee at my women's community. I'm not scared that she's going to take my my members, right? Yeah. I'm not she's not scared I'm going to take her members because if someone goes to her, that's where they need to be. There is so many, so many, so there is enough of everything in this world to go around. So why would we be clawing at each other, clawing each other's eyeballs out and backstabbing each other? And that's the, I think that's the, that's, that's the vibe I kind of felt in the Instagram world, in the influencer world, when I very first reached out to you and I was like, do you remember that message? It was, hey, I wanna be just totally transparent here. I'm an influencer, you're a brand. Let's just tell each other the secrets, the deep, dark secrets that no one wants to talk about instead of me being yeah. over here like, well, I'll do it for this amount of money, but behind the scenes going, oh, did I ask for too much? Oh, should I have asked for more? Oh, you know, and it's like, yeah. I am the kind of person that wanted to build a friendship right? I wanted to build a family. I said, I want my collaborations to be part of my family. And that way they, and I have, I have every one of these bags and they've been with me everywhere around the world. I still obviously am using them and I tell everybody about them. And guess what that is? If I would have reached out to you and you would have been this like nasty or cold or trying not to tell your secrets, right? Yeah. I would never have gotten another bag. I would have never talked 
amazingly about your bags to everybody I meet because I do yeah. love them. And right, there's a yeah. total difference in that. I, I'm i a huge believer in that as well. I, I think, <laughs> so I believe in setting goals, but I think the experiences and the people that you meet along the way are sometimes more important than the goals. They actually teach you more and you actually accelerate your business more. And as part of that, I always make it a point to be very transparent and especially with women in this business. Um, I mean, I, I literally had a person reach out to me on Instagram, you know, before I sold the business and say, can you tell me like how you made your bags, where you made your bags at, all this stuff, because I want to start my own diaper bag business. <laughs> and I was like, at first I was like, whoa, okay. like. Wow, that's some confidence to just reach out and ask me like my whole process. And I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm gonna share. And so, you know, I didn't share everything. I was very transparent. Like, look, I have a factory, it's a, it's a small factory, and I don't want to overload them right now because the quality is really high and we're scaling together. Cause that was just like you and I formed a relationship. I did the same with that factory. We were in it together. I said, but I will tell you, here's how you find a million more. Um, so you know I was not the only diaper bag main producer, there's tons of factories do diaper bag. Um, but I got shared with her my entire process. I, she had an Instagram, I kept up with her and it went nowhere. And I, and that made me sad. Like I, I knew that was probably going to happen. So I, I think a lot of people, I don't mind sharing a ton of information with cause they don't do anything with it. But that also makes me sad now. Like, and originally I was like, ah, just share the information. Nobody's even going to take action. Um, now it makes me sad when people don't take action. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> I shared some great, you know, business information with you, but um, I've never been hurt in a business decision by business decision by sharing information with other people. I just, I just haven't. I just believe the same thing you believe. There's enough out there for everyone, and everyone's gonna put their own spin on things and be their own person and find their own following. I say that generically, um, even outside like a social media perspective, but find their own following. Yeah, find their own community. Mm. I. I actually, it's funny because this is, you see this a little bit and maybe I'm just seeing it more because I'm noticing it, but because Rick and I had this conversation about how we're not something special because we're successful in this way. We're not mm -hmm. something different. We're not like we, we didn't get this uh, special gene that makes me smarter in finance or it, I didn't get this, you know, like other than people who are literally a Kennedy dropped into politics, whatever, right? Right. Like there's really not that difference between people other than consistency and commitment. Those yeah. that's the difference. I might add one more C in there, and that's curiosity. Oh, I, I think, love it. Yeah, I think that's what I've learned. Like when I'm curious and ask a ton of questions, it's like, oh, I just learned something new. Oh, what? Like, oh, I can't believe that person actually answered me. Like, that was a pretty bold question for me to ask. Like, right? That person dropping into my messages asking. So, yeah, I, I, yes, 100%. Those are the qualities that have made me successful. Again, not only professionally, but just having a well-balanced and I don't even want to use the word balance per se because I don't feel like my life is always balanced. But even in my <laughs> personal life, I feel very grounded is a really good word. I feel just very content and happy um, because of those things. I I love, I'm going to go back because you said set goals, but let your focus be on the experience. Uh, that was your yeah. number three that you wanted to talk about. And I actually could not love that more. I have rules to setting goals. And I, I can't remember if I've done a podcast episode about this, but my number three rule is the goal isn't even the point. Mm -hmm. That's not even yeah. the point. We're not yet what we could be. And we need to work through the clutter along the way. And the actual goal is to turn into the person that you are meant to be. So the goal's yes. not even the point. No. That's, that's <laughs> like, great, that's at the end. And if you do make it, great. If you don't, great. But look yeah. at the kind of person that you're becoming trying to get there. Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because I'm in business. I, I love my corporate career. I actually work in uh, global alliances and strategic partnerships. So kind of in a nutshell, it's my role to bring two, two organizations together um, that have beneficial attributes and help them go to market together because they're better together. Um, and I love that. 
Um, but we do set goals in terms of like revenue, but they are all directional. What's underneath that is really the strategic objectives that are going to help you reach those goals. And that's where you start getting into the, like, how's this going to happen? Which to me is more of the important stuff. So with City Collective, I actually looked at it a little different, which is I started saying, what are my challenges to grow City Collective? So I said, I just want to grow it. And luckily, you know, at that point, I didn't have a board. I didn't have investors. So I didn't really have to have that revenue number. But I just said, I want to grow City Collective. And then I looked at all the challenges that were stopping me. And that was actually a really good way for me personally, because I love to overcome challenges and problem solve to get to my goals. And I, so I, it was a weird way to set goals. It wasn't the traditional, like, I'm going to break into this new market or I'm going to sell X number of bags. It was a little different approach that didn't weigh on me as heavily as not meeting that that revenue number I set. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And and that's the thing is, is goals. Absolutely. You have to have a goal because you have to have a direction. Yeah. But stop focusing on. I hate that when someone doesn't make their goal then it becomes a shame cycle or then it becomes a self-sabotage or then it becomes a a limiting belief. Well, I've failed before, right? Also, I have a very redundant habit checking system in my planner that I created for my community. And it's like your habit, your goal, and then it says done, but then it also says reward. So you literally have to, for one goal, check four times. It is super redundant. But I'm like, because I want you to not only feel the good, how does it feel when you check something off? It's just like, Mm -hmm. ah, that's like the cream on the donut. It's just so (laughs) good. And then the reward, because guess what? You have got to reward yourself. You have got to celebrate the wins. What's the point of life? What is the point of just every day? It's like Groundhog's Day, waking up at the same time to the same song, to the same get the kids to school, to the same. It's like, come on, where's your joy? You have got to sit down. I've got a my my poor assistant. I'm always like, okay, I need you to make me a a PDF. I need you to make me a PDF. Like this is what I want it to be. And it's a tool. It's going to be one of our tools. I now have like 20 tools. I'm like, it's a happiness tool. (laughs) And I want everyone to write down things that bring them joy or whatever, you know, but or or whatever. But it's it's you've got to take time to stop and remember that you only have one life. Uh, yes. Right. And and yes. go back to number one, controlling the things that we can control, making our own choices and stop comparing. I mean, it's using all of these exact wonderful things, these wonderful philosophies that you've shared. And it's like, this is your life. A hundred percent. And I think that's what a lot of these come come back to whether it's you're setting your goals or trying to take control, it's like you really have to ask, what do you want for yourself? And like really ask, like, is this being influenced by what you see other people doing? You know, for me, like take the planner. I tried to use a planner and I wanted, I like almost just drove myself crazy trying to make myself into a planner person. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Why am I doing this? I'm not a planner person. And I let, just let it go. And it's like, life has been fine. I organize myself other ways. But that's like a simple example. But I do see, and I get I get caught in this trap the, the same same way. I, everything we're talking about, I still do. Um, and that's like, it's one thing I've learned is like, your problems and some of these things, they never go away. You just get better at solving them. You get better at dealing with them. You get better at control. You get better at setting goals. Not, none of this ever gets perfect or goes away <laughs> per se. Um, but but yeah, I think I think it all, a lot of my life comes back to these core concepts for sure. <laughs> and you just nailed, you just brought us to the fourth that is, I okay, I wanna know where you, where you th- there's gotta be a story behind this. Start with the bad news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's never it's never a one and done thing. It's for sure life, a constant process. Um, yeah, it's it's what you just said. You can't just yeah. do X, Y, Z and think that it's going to be fixed. Yeah, I mean, oh, gosh, like I just could give you a million examples, but I fell into that trap. I'm like, 
oh, you know, oh, there's this four-step course on social media marketing, and if I do this four steps, then my social media marketing problems are all going away. Well, I did it. Oh, it worked for a week. Oh, now it doesn't? Like, I got so angry. And I was like, what a waste of money. And I'm like, it wasn't a waste of money. We had a really good week last week, and they what they said worked. Like, it's that. It's, it's parenting. Like, I'm a constant work in progress with parenting. I am a really patient leader at work. I'm a really patient parent at home. But when I lose that patience, there's no, there's no gray area. There's like, I just lose it. And I just, uh, and I, and I've had to learn, like, I have to speak up as I'm nearing that, that loss of patience. And I have to say, I'm frustrated right now. I'm going to walk away and I'm going to come back when I can talk to you in the appropriate way. Um, and my son actually repeated that to me the other day and I'm like, amazing. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, wanted to like get something else, else out and I had to hold that back. But it's like, it's everything, every little thing, even the gym. I love going to the gym. Like I love how I feel. It's such a part of my routine, but I hate waking up early. <laughs> so I'm like, it's never going to go away. I thought it would. It doesn't. So it's like. And once again, just like, I don't know, you just can't control those things. So let it go. Focus on your choices. Um, but yeah, life is, is not ever, I know that that's so cliche to say, but life is never going to be perfect. It's always a work in progress, marriage, all of it. Yeah. The search for happiness is futile. You're, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy oh. when. I'll yeah. be, I'll be done doing this when I'm this rich or when I have X amount of money, because no, no, it's never, it's what you, unless you define, okay, when I have this amount of money in my bank account, I'm done. Like, unless you define it, but we never do. It's, it's not, I'll be this when it's like what you said, I'll finish this course and I'll be an expert when this is, that's like, which is a whole podcast unto itself about happiness and but that is part of like, you know, I say your, your problems never go away. You just get better at solving them. Happiness and contentment are the same exact way. And it's way more intense when you're younger. But as you get older, you just start to accept the ebbs and flows. And it's really frustrating when you don't understand them. Because there's times when I'm like, man, I just feel lost. Like, oh, I have a successful career. My family's healthy. We have some exciting things. But I feel just, I don't know not motivated. I feel like my life isn't, what am I doing with my life? Like (laughs) I still have those moments. Um, and I think as women, uh, again, could be a whole nother podcast. We have to look at our health and our hormones. Like that's an actual real thing that I've started to pay more attention to. But I think you also just have to realize like sometimes you need that, that cleaning mirror time to reset. Like there's just so much and you've put so much expectations on yourself to constantly be achieving that you don't know how to chill out because that might have been a moment of law. Like maybe work wasn't as busy. Maybe we weren't as, you know, traveling. Um, there weren't as many exciting front events going on. And that gave me too much time to sit there and be like, oh, oh crap, what am I doing with my life? And I should have been like, oh, this is nice. What can I do with my life? I can go watch a movie. I can like, right? So... Yeah, I think happiness, again, is is part of that process is like embrace the ebbs and flows. Never going to be perfect. And it's okay. Like you don't have to understand it sometimes why you feel a certain way. But just focus on some things to get you out of the rut. I think when we first got to France, when we left that very first time with our one way tickets and we were staying at this cutest like 300 year old barn turned into an Airbnb. I mean, it was just so amazing. And we were just go, 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 go. I mean, up to Normandy, out to, out to, uh, where's Brest or wherever, you know, we were just go, go, go every day. And I was sitting there on this little chair and Rick and the boys were on the couch reading a story or doing something. We had this fire and I had this gorgeous wine I was drinking and I just sat there and I thought, this is what it's about, right? We were just like, well, what if we never get back to France? We've got to see all the things. We've got to go to all the things, you know? And luckily it, it was early enough in that trip that I just was like, we have got to slow down and enjoy just this, just sitting here, like doing my laundry 
in this weird little washing machine <laughs> and hang drying every, you know, hand yeah. washing all my dishes, having charcuterie as dinner because that's mm-hmm. what it is there. You yes. know, like it, stop comparing it to what I think it should be yes. and enjoy what it actually is. Yes, I love that. It's so true. And that that's everyday life. I mean, I, 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 you can definitely... And that's something I, I do need to say to myself more often. Like that really just resonated with me. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I'll be here all week, folks. <laughs> well, I actually, if you've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed on my podcast or on my um, Instagram this month, March, I challenged myself, actually. I, I did myself a challenge and it's the hashtags, um, the four core categories challenge and the revitalized lifestyle because the four core categories in my community are body beliefs, bonds, biz. And I think those are the four categories that you're constantly this person spinning plates, right? And you, Mm -hmm. and without fail, one slows down, right? So that's where the attention goes. It's just like the life will. That's the best tool. I love the life will because it really narrows down which plate needs to be spun faster, right? Oh, is that the life will is the one you color? In. Yes. Yeah, yes. I know what you're talking yes. about now. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've done that. Okay. It's Sorry, so go good. Ahead. No, it's it is great. Good. It is so it's... good. Everybody needs to do that. Uh-huh. And then do it at points in time too. Yes, because yes. you'll get done with one thing and then there's another mm-hmm. one now you get to focus on, right? Yeah. Yep. So that's the four core categories challenges. Are all of your plates spinning well, right? Maybe not. So where do you need to focus some attention? And then the revitalized lifestyle is this is a lifestyle life is a lifestyle it's not i'm going to be on this crash diet i'm going to be on you know i'm going to be um in this place in my business just hustling forever it's it's a lifestyle it's forever it's a practice i'm not going to instantly not yell at my kids but tomorrow i get to wake up and try again right it's a lifestyle yes that's so true. And I am the type of person that that's hard for me. Like a lot of people are like, and even my husband will say, he's like, everything's just easier for you. Like those things are easy. I'm like, no, like I just try really hard. Like I am very consistent and I'm resilient. And when I screw up, I actually like the next morning, I do apologize to my kids. It's like, I, well, we, we try, we're kind of the big believe don't go to bed with any of that hanging out, but I sometimes will talk about it again the next day, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, hey, I really am still feeling bad about this. And um, I wanna make sure you guys understand that, you know, I didn't mean it this way or I didn't need to raise my voice. Um, but yeah, it's oof, it's uh, it's a lot to think about. Like I pause there because it is, you, you realize how, I guess, aware you have to be um, to just kind of keep that lifestyle working and, but it's, it's worth it. And it does become, I think, a little bit more natural over time, even though it's still work along the way. Yeah, it's just a practice. Everything's a yeah. practice. It's like you don't show up at a yoga class and immediately throw yeah. a tree pose, like yeah. one-legged whatever. Yeah. Peacock, I don't know. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I don't know them all. Either. The crab, I don't know. I have no idea what they're called, but you don't just walk in there and all of a sudden you can pull your foot up to your head. Like, it's a practice. It takes years to do those kinds of things. So yeah. why would we think that all of a sudden we have this baby and now we're experts at what we're supposed to do with them? Or all of a sudden we're married and we're marriage experts, right? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden we're doing a business, starting a business, and we need to be experts. It's like, uh, you're never going to be an expert. Even if you wanted to be an expert, I love it. I had Sally Holder on here the other day, and she said, even if you wanted to be an expert on one thing, pick one thing and just be the expert at it, uh, silicone straws. I'm going to be the expert at silicone straws, okay? And I am going to know everything there is to know about it. You can't be. Because with the amount of information that's constantly coming and changing and going into the internet and, you know, you can never be the expert at something. So just enjoy the process of learning, I guess, right? (laughs) I enjoy the ride. How many cliches can I throw out here? Enjoy the ride. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I know there are a lot of cliches out there. Um, And I will say I'm not a big 
I am not a big believer in cliches. I'm not a big believer in like affirmation statements at the beginning of the day, all that good stuff. Um, but I will say a lot of them are true. <laughs> like a lot of, of these cliches are true. Everything we've kind of talked about, I'm sure everybody probably heard before in some context. Um, but we're talking about them again because they're helpful and they're true. And when you actually put them into practice, uh, you will have a happier, more content and successful, whatever your definition of this is, uh, whatever your definition of success is, um, life overall. Yeah. I think the best one for me, my most favorite is I had Seth Studley on here and he said, when I wake up, it's so simple. It's not overthought. It's not like I have to stand in the mirror and stare in my eyes and tell myself I love myself, whatever, which some people need that. And I think it's beautiful. But he said, honestly, it's just when my feet hit the floor, left, right. Thank you. Yeah. And what I'm saying is for thank you, God, for that day. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my strong body. Thank you for my wife sleeping next to me. Thank you for my healthy kids. Right. It's all encompassing. He knows what it all means. And like I just got chills because that's two words that encompass his whole vibe for the day. Right. Going yeah. forward in gratitude. And I'm like, well, that is so profound and so simple Yeah. that maybe if we all just start thinking of it that way, like. That's your one little control you have, right? Your one little control to start the day with and and make it intentional right and just go forth. Right there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, what I do in the morning is I have to say, so I get up and I head to the gym before the boys wake up. But when I come home, they're awake. And for me, I have to do, do or say three nice things. So I could walk into a storm and that does happen. The boys are crying, my husband's frustrated, something did not go right in the morning. It doesn't matter. I walk up to them all, I hug them, I kiss them. They might be crying when I'm doing it, but I do that. I might say something positive and then, you know, without, you know, discounting what they're going through, but say something like I, it has, doing that has really changed and it changes the mood in the room, doesn't make it go away. We have to go through that process of, I have to hear them out, all that good stuff, but it changes the way that I'm handling it and I feel so much better. Um, and it's been a conscious effort to do that. But yeah, I love that. It's very similar. That's my thank you moment of like, let's just set the day to the right tone. And, and yeah, I, I love it. You're doing your cognitive cycles. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm so grateful that you decided to join me and I've loved, loved chatting uh, with you and I've loved getting to see your beautiful face in person-ish. Like, know, right? I Isn't know. that sad that this is in person? But I'll take yeah, it. I, I will to take it. To Utah. That's what I need to do. I love Utah and I don't spend enough time there. So I you guys need to come there. out here. Let's figure something out with like this fall because our cabin in the fall is like, oh, oh so I, good uh, yeah every time i watch your stories when you're out there i'm just like oh we need to go and then yes. of course he's like well then let's just go and i'm like yes oh. i love I that like, i gotta take control <laughs> <laughs> but no let's i just do it. you know i want to say i am so happy that that we met and um i can't wait till the opportunity to meet you in person and just everything that you have done you truly do care about everybody that you speak with from you know like you talked about the moment that you reached out i was just so happy and i was like i will give this woman whatever she wants because i <laughs> i know you really cared um versus like even like somebody with a million followers reaching out and asking me to gift something and maybe they'll talk about it maybe not it's like okay well no interest because like i want you to love the brand um and and yeah so i just i'm really proud of you and just everything that you've done and these podcasts have been really helpful to me and so i'm actually like a little bit uh just like i don't know just amazing like i get to be on one of yours so thank you for having me that was a very long-winded way to say that no that was very sweet and so kind so many compliments in there i'm just like mm, that's so sweet i just love you thank you so much all right lady we'll see you later